Throughout the history of animal evolution, there are, are always some remarkably creative evolutionary pathways that leave paleontologists in awe of the miracles of life's evolution. For example, in the late Cambrian period, there was a mollusk-like creature whose evolution was highly unexpected. Its name was Plectrinoceros. In our previous video, we mentioned that the ancestors of mollusks evolved shells for defense. However, while other animals were using shells for protection, Plectrinoceros learned to inflate itself inside the shell. I'm not sure what practical significance it had to transform into an inflatable doll in that era, but it was clearly fascinating. As we know, air has a much lower density than water. Consequently, Plectrinoceros started to float. Archimedes would have been pleased to see this. With this skill, Plectrinoceros reached new heights, both spatially and evolutionarily, within the realm of mollusks. Actually, we don't have a clear understanding of what the soft body of Plectrinoceros looked like. Well, I admit that we don't have a clear picture of the soft body of most ancient mollusks. All they left behind were numerous horns like fossils. However, most researchers believe that Plectrinoceros already possessed the iconic tentacles that would later characterize the cephalopods, heralding the rise of a new generation of tentacled creatures within the world of mollusks, the cephalopoda. And they encountered a glorious era. During the period around 480 million years ago, on one hand, the seas were still inhabited by survivors from the Cambrian period, and on the other hand, a new generation of animals thrived in the oceans. These dominating early cephalopods, it's like being in a seafood buffet. Starting from around 470 million years ago, the cephalopoda embarked on its golden age. Not only did the number of species experience a tremendous growth, but their evolutionary potential as mollusks also burst forth. They evolved a dazzling array of upgraded equipment. Their mouthparts, known as radulas, developed an additional structure similar to a bird's beak. From then on, breaking through an animal's armor became as easy as eating cake. They also evolved funnel-like structures that could shoot jets of water, similar to rocket engines, transforming themselves into biological torpedoes. At the same time, their eyes evolved from simple light-sensitive spots to true visual eyes, formed through the principle of imaging through a small aperture. This combination of equipment is perhaps the most outstanding in the Ordovician Ocean. With their eyes locked onto prey, they propelled themselves forward with high-speed jets, their powerful tentacles ensnaring their victims. Their beaks paid no heed to armor, and their radulas delivered continuous strikes. Combined with the formidable defense provided by their thick, heavy shells, there were no opponents in the Ordovician Ocean that could rival them. Among them, the largest invertebrates of the Paleozoic era were born, the Camaroceras. Its shell could reach up to nine meters in length, and when you add its body and tentacles, it probably exceeded 10 meters. In the Ordovician period, these colossal creatures ruled the oceans, rightfully earning the title of kings. However, these majestic Camaroceras had a fatal weakness. Their air-filled shells struggled to withstand high water pressure, making it difficult for them to dive into the deep sea. Additionally, the turbulent waves and reefs in shallow waters easily damaged their shells. As a result, these giant cephalopods, represented by Camaroceras, were confined to narrow and intermediate depths, unable to venture too deep or too shallow. This strategic limitation restricted their maneuverability. Then, around 440 million years ago, for reasons still unknown, the global sea level experienced a drastic drop of approximately 100 meters, followed by a rapid rise. This upheaval completely disrupted the dominion of the cephalopods. The medium to large sized prey and planktonic organisms they relied on for survival suffered significant losses. Adding to the troubles, the oceans during this period experienced some kind of pollution. Oxygen levels plummeted and heavy metal ions rapidly increased. These were fatal blows to the cephalopods. Ultimately, the entire class suffered an overall reduction in size of 80%. The fall of the kings became a cruel twist of fate, marking the most regrettable era in the evolutionary history of the cephalopods. 
After the devastating mass extinction, the sea scorpions, once prey of the Camarasseras, rose to prominence. They occupied a favorable position in the food chain, blocking the return of the cephalopod kings. However, the terrifying aspect of cephalopods, or all mollusks, lies not in expanding their territory in times of prosperity, but in their indomitable will in times of adversity. In fact, during the peak of the cephalopods in the Ordovician period, subtle transformations were occurring. Early cephalopods, such as the Camarasseras, had imperfect body structures. The straight-shaped shells, although advantageous for linear acceleration, suffered from excessive torque during turns, leading to poor maneuverability. Moreover, the pointed tip of the shell was easily damaged. As a response, some cephalopods evolved coiled shells, like the Ceniseris. The coiled shell provided protection for the delicate tip and reduced the torque during turns. This evolutionary adaptation was highly successful. Consequently, their descendants made minimal modifications to the shell thereafter. The modern-day nautilida may be the descendants of this lineage of cephalopods. Another branch of cephalopods, however, completely abandoned the fragile pointed tip of the shell. As they grew, they would expose their soft body, which would then wrap around their shell, followed by shedding the final section of the shell. Simultaneously, they secreted calcium to seal the opening, preventing the shell from leaking air. These small innovations laid the foundation for the cephalopod's success in the following hundreds of millions of years. Around 420 million years ago, the Earth entered the Devonian period. While the cephalopods and sea scorpions were still vying for dominance, a new force suddenly entered the battlefield, the jawed fish. These fish brought a sense of despair to the marine creatures. In terms of attack methods, speed, defensive capabilities, and sensory perception, the jawed fish exhibited overwhelming advantages in every detail. The formidable equipment that once made the cephalopods invincible in the ocean became powerless against the jawed fish. Even the sea scorpions, which had fought against the cephalopods for millions of years, were almost eradicated from the ocean in an instant. They could only seek refuge in freshwater and on land, barely clinging to survival. The cephalopods, too, retreated step by step, teetering on the brink of extinction. Was this the end of the cephalopods' evolutionary story? No, the cephalopods never bow down to fate. The first to rise from the terrifying rule of the jawed fish was none other than the ammonites, which we mentioned in our previous video. Ammonites were highly adaptable cephalopods. Since the cephalopods were no longer the royal family, they couldn't dwell on past glory and indulge in it. Previously, cephalopods were animals with long lifespans that carefully nurtured only a few offspring. However, ammonites broke this rule. They adopted a strategy of rapid growth and rapid reproduction, quickly growing to maturity, producing numerous offspring, and then swiftly dying. They avoided direct confrontation with the jawed fish and relied purely on numbers to survive the initial crisis. Later, the Earth witnessed another mass extinction event, the late Devonian extinction. This is extinction event completely wiped out the backbone of the jawed fish at that time, the placoderms. Thus, the ammonites seized another opportunity and optimized their shell structures to the fullest extent possible. They created a powerful shell that could withstand direct confrontation with the jawed fish. This laid the foundation for the prosperity of ammonites for over 100 million years. It was not until the Triassic period, after various marine reptiles ventured into the sea, that this balance was once again disrupted. Apart from ammonites, another branch of cephalopods chose a different evolutionary path. Let's go back to the end of the Devonian period. With the widespread proliferation of land plants and a record high atmospheric oxygen content, a large number of fast-swimming animals emerged in the oceans. This period is known as the Devonian Swimming Animal Revolution. During this time, some cephalopods evolved stronger jet propulsion. When the jet propulsion became powerful enough, the shell actually increased drag. As we mentioned earlier, some cephalopods temporarily covered their shells with soft tissue. However, 
These cephalopods turned this temporary measure into a long-term strategy. Over time, the shell within their bodies lost its protective and inflatable functions and gradually regressed. Thus, these cephalopods evolved into belemnites. The appearance of belemnites marked a completely new subclass within the cephalopods, which is the most common subclass today, the Coloidia. The Coloidia completely abandoned the armored evolutionary path of their cephalopod predecessors and underwent a full transformation into the fast and agile class. They demonstrated that they were not limited to hiding in a hard shell in fear. They used speed to showcase their determination for survival. In order to complement their exceptional mobility, the Coloidia evolved highly advanced sensory abilities. Their eyes developed a flexible crystalline lens that allowed for adjustable focus, making them possess one of the most formidable eyes in the animal kingdom. Their visual acuity surpasses that of many vertebrates in various aspects. To match their high-speed movements and keen senses, the Coloidia also enhance their nervous systems to unprecedented levels. They possess the unquestionably strongest nerve fibers among all invertebrates, an enormous axon. Each nerve fiber is as thick as your headphone wire, significantly increasing the efficiency of nerve signal transmission by an order of magnitude. They have also evolved the largest brains among invertebrates, pushing the intelligence of invertebrates to its highest point in history. This combination of extraordinary intelligence and a range of other new adaptations empowers the Coloidia with flexible tactical choices. If they cannot escape, they do not suffer from the burden of shells like ammonites or the Nautilida subclass. With their soft bodies, they can slip into crevices. If no crevices are available, they possess a new adaptation, the ink sac. They can spray ink that mildly paralyzes and obstructs vision, coupled with their upgraded camouflage abilities, allowing them to consistently outwit predators. If cornered, their tentacles have evolved suction cups and sharp hooks, making a last resort counterattack possible. As a result, the cephalopods represented by the Coloidia not only survived under the threat of vertebrates, but also became proficient hunters of fish and crustaceans. They climbed to a higher position in the food chain, occupying the upper middle levels. Around 65 million years ago, an asteroid impact caused the famous Cretaceous Paleogene KPG, mass extinction event. This impact led to a series of complex cascading effects, one of which was ocean acidification. This posed a fatal threat to the fragile larvae of ammonites and almost wiped out their primary food source, the planktonic organisms in the ocean. As a result, the once prosperous ammonites disappeared from the pages of history. On the other hand, the descendants of ancient cephalopods, such as the Nautilida subclass, survived the extinction event. They retained the long lifespan characteristic of their ancient ancestors and relied on a small number of highly tolerant adult individuals to endure the most difficult years of the mass extinction. They managed to survive against all odds. Meanwhile, the Coloidia, including the squid and octopus ancestors, undoubtedly had the last laugh. Without the constraints of inflated shells, the Coloidia were able to dive into the deep sea, beyond the reach of their ancient cephalopod relatives. The stable environment of the deep sea became an excellent refuge. When the mass extinction event passed, the ancestors of today's squids and octopuses emerged from the depths of the ocean once again. Compared to their early counterparts, their internalized shells became more degenerate. Freed from the burden of shells, the new generation of Coloidia, including squids and octopuses, experienced further improvements in speed. In conclusion, the KPG mass extinction event brought significant changes to the cephalopods. While the ammonites and many other ancient cephalopods vanished, the Nautilida and Coloidia managed to survive and continue their evolutionary journey, adapting to new environments and evolving new strategies for survival. Represented by the squid, a branch of the Coloidia subclass gradually weakened their jet propulsion and, following the lead of fish, evolved fins for locomotion. This allowed them to reach new heights of maneuverability. Among them, 
the cunning octopus is particularly notable. Octopuses likely originated from a group called the Vampyromorphida within the Colawidia subclass. Their shells have undergone the most complete degeneration, resulting in extremely soft bodies. Combined with their incredible camouflage abilities, Octopuses have become unrivaled tactical masters in the ocean. They excel in stealth, ambushes, and even tool usage. It almost feels like they are primates from an alternate universe, having descended into our world's oceans. These new generations of Colawidia have inherited the legacy of their cephalopod ancestors and the missions they carried. For over 400 million years, under the absolute dominance of vertebrates, those once prosperous creatures and their descendants either survived in marginal ecological niches or fought desperately, ultimately becoming the fossils that we hold in our hands today. Only the mollusks. Whether it's the gastropods, guarding their territories and seizing opportunities. Or the bivalves, silently filtering the sand and launching counterattacks. Not to mention the cephalopods, who have been battling vertebrates in a test of wits and courage for hundreds of millions of years. They are like the ancient rulers of the oceans, their spirits reaching towards a glimmer of hope in the future. They are the warriors who have never surrendered. Facing the loss of the throne they held for over 400 million years, the mollusks will forever in the dark abyss of the deep sea. Waiting and gazing,